In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, working on the second layer of planking, finishing uh, and applying the second layer of planking on the bottom. So I started with uh, big pieces again uh, on on the bottom and the and the back like I did in the, <clears throat> the first layer. The thing is, is with these, I had to apply epoxy to the entire surface, both were on the boat. I did my same technique, encapsulate the boat, encapsulate this whole piece. So I had it flipped over on this other side, and then and then apply my thickened epoxy, which is consistency of like Elmer's glue again, and put that on here, and then flip this board over right in place, and and then use my composite nailer. So this was a little scary doing pieces this big. Uh, the first pieces weren't so bad because I only had to do epoxy where the battens were and the keel and and the uh, chines but <clears throat> but anyway I did it but it, it's a little tricky to do that and that's why that's it's a good reason to um, um, that's why I use that silver tip because it gives me a lot more uh, time to work with it before it starts hardening up on me and gelling so here's the second piece on the other side and again the angle that I use and you want to go the opposite you alternate those angles as you do different layers. Here I'm just working my way up uh, with these uh, strips and I didn't talk about this I don't think in the other video but the strips towards the uh, middle part of the boat can be wider both on the bottom and the sides and then they get narrower as you move towards the front as the curvature the boat curves more and so forth to get more compound uh, curves. Um, but as I was working my way forward, uh, I noticed some more areas where um, I had, you know, these pieces. You can kind of maybe see a little bit there, maybe not, but, you know, where this wasn't, they weren't flush to each other. Um, and uh, so I found some more areas as I was going. So then I just put some epoxy in between those and did some creative uh, wedging in on boards, <clears throat> whatever I needed to do to hold those in place. I had one on this on the side also so just, just taking care of those <clears throat> before I can continue and then what I'm showing here is uh, as you apply each board again you want to have a uh, like a chamfer and uh, an angle kind of an angled edge there it's a little bit hard to see um, that way this is the side that you would made up against the previous board that allows some epoxy to uh, this side here is what would be down. So you have a little bit of a, a channel or whatever in between those two boards to allow some epoxy squeeze in. <clears throat> so just to kind of show that this piece on this edge would just be normal square and this piece on this mating edge would be where you'd put that angle and then this would be flat here and then the mating piece as you continue on would have that angle. So you want to use that technique as you um, so you don't need to do that for the first layer because it's basically air underneath but subsequent layers you want to use that technique <clears throat> so here I'm just working my way work my way towards the front and you can see all the composite uh, nails that I put in place and I put this strip of tape here to help um, because there's a little bit of overlap there and it makes it easier that way I can uh, trim these off again I use my Dremel tool with a cutting cutting wheel um, and it made it easier to get those pieces out of there. <clears throat> so I'm just showing here that I started using my table saw uh, to cut angles. Um, if you notice on these boards here, um, I don't, they're not all just squared off. I kind of was trying to cut close to the angles that these needed to be just to make future trimming a little easier. So these are just dry fitted in place for now. Um, and then as you cut these angles, they need to match uh, as close to exact as you can get them with these other pieces and uh, so that sometimes can take a little trial and error because you also need this edge here to match exactly so it takes a little uh, trial and error uh, you kind of work your way into it sometimes I mean you use this edge and then this edge basically stays the same and then you, just, you might have to shave off a little um, to get these angles so they match and mate. That's where the, the table saw um, actually helps with that. <clears throat> and here I'm just showing again that I have the boards ready to go on. These four are ready to go and they're flipped over 
and then I apply the uh, encapsulating epoxy on these. I do talk about that in another video, just a general one about how planking pieces are attached, but so this would be a little bit redundant. And here's where the place where those pieces are going to go. Again, I got my composite nail ready to go, and this is that chip brush that I use with cutoff bristles. And uh, so I first encapsulate this area, uh, same as encapsulating the pieces, these, the back side of these that are going to go there. And then I use thickened epoxy uh, and that chip brush. Well, I first spread it with a trowel, like I talked about in the other video, and then the chip brush. Well, I'm just showing my mixing cups are ready to go. And then chip brush to uh, <clears throat> spread it and get the edges and everything. Uh, one, one thing to note here is <clears throat> what I was doing for quite a while is I would I would mix the just non-thickened epoxy for encapsulating both the boat and the pieces that were going to go. And then after I got that encapsulated, then I'd come and mix a smaller batch of thickened epoxy um, or however much I needed. And and uh, after a while, I think I started doing this on the final planking. I just started mixing one batch and I would use whatever I needed for encapsulating and then the remaining part I would and then thicken that and use that and that just saved making mixing cups it just made it a little easier i don't know why it, i didn't do that to begin with i guess because i didn't think of it but so i, I mean you can do it either way but uh, you just you, what i would do is keep track of how much epoxy <clears throat> like to do for boards and <clears throat> so you have to kind of keep track and mix how much you think you need and so i'd keep track so that way i would know approximately how much to mix like for the next boards and things, so it helped me a lot to do that. Now, the first time you do it, you have to guess a little bit, but <clears throat> but then you get where you, you kind of know how much you need. So here are those boards uh, in place now. So again, I found another area where I needed to uh, get rid of that, where one side was, one board was a little higher than another. And one thing too, if you notice, I found some areas up in here. It looks a little strange, but I did a, some fairing of the plywood up in here and uh, in this area as well um, before I started the second layer of planking. Sometimes you have to do that for each layer. You actually want to do a, some fairing after uh, each layer is done. And here's this uh, side here where I'm getting those final pieces. And you can see there's some overhang, and but I will then trim those off. <clears throat> ready to, with my uh, Dremel tool, the cutting wheel. So that's just showing where the planking is all attached now. And now I've uh, done trimming along here um, and also uh, towards the back. So this is uh, showing some additional trimming. Uh, and I don't think I have all of the, I don't, the sanding isn't quite done on this edge. But if you remember, from that first drawing that I showed beginning of these videos about planking, how I'm overlapping bottom to side, bottom to side. So these, this bottom layer is gonna lap over this side layer and then this will be sanded flush with the side. So here's the boat where after I've done that final sanding. And uh, so this outer, this uh, bottom layer <clears throat> all along the boat is lapping over the side and now it's sanded flush. So then the next layer I put on, be putting on to be the side, another layer of side planking, and uh, then it will lap up uh, to be flush with the bottom once it's sanded off. So that is the second layer on the bottom.